In this demonstration, you will learn how to use Insight's predefined calculator functions to create additional variables based on existing data. The key fundamental of predefined calculator functions are that the selected parts matter. They are the parts on which you will be calculating that attribute. Therefore, when you go to compute the minimum, maximum, or average, it matters what you have selected. Say you want to compute new variables by multiplying pressure times velocity. That new variable will only be available on the selected part. Your calculator is split into two different tabs. The first tab is the predefined calculator quantities. The second tab is the user-defined calculator quantities. The predefined functions go back to the fact that Insight has predefined specific C routines to run all of these functions much more quickly. The first thing with the predefined functions is using the search. Here you will take this long list of predefined functions and search for a term such as mean. You end up receiving results for your search such as spa mean, which is a spatial mean function related to your search. It's a calculator widget where you are meant to follow instructions below about what to specify. The help button here will take you to a localized help document repository for the specific function selected whereas the help button here will take you to a more generalized help dialog for calculator functions. For example, you can also narrow down the category related to statistics. You end up getting only statistics-based operations in your search results. The same can also be accomplished for boundary layer functions, or force and moment, just to name a few. Some functions do not require any predefined function parameters such as area. They work right out of the box without specifying any extra parameters. The idea of per case or per part plays an important role. Per case returns a volume for all the parts selected as a single value as a case constant. Whereas per part will compute the volume per each part and provide you with a per part constant which would be equivalent to a table where each of these parts would have their own results and values. For example, you may look at spa mean and look at the average pressure. If you leave this as per case and selected all of the parts, it will give you the overall average of everyone as a single unique value. Whereas, if you chose per part and selected the evaluate for selected parts operation, it would give you what is effectively a table back, and this would be for each part that was selected and the value that was computed for each. That's important for constants, therefore, any function that computes a constant will have a per part constant and a per case constant. You can type and use any functions in the user defined area that have already been computed and you can do basic math operations such as add, multiply, divide. There are some mathematical functions in here such as cross products and dot products, greater than and less than which are quite useful. If you want to have vector quantity and want to pull off components, these three operations will pull off components. Therefore, if you wanted the x-coordinates, you would type or create the following expression and name it as cx under the variable name. This will allow you to pull off coordinates in the x-direction of the x-component. Quantities in the calculator should, if you're using units, have resulting units come back. You can also override units in the user-defined portion of the calculator where you might be adding something to it. You could override the dimension to be some other quantity. You can use the Override Dimensions button to do just that. Say you want to create an expression between both an operation and between two quantities, as well as a predefined function quantity such as pressure minus spa mean. You would need to create a variable for spa mean first, and then you would create another new variable for pressure minus. The variable calculation that you specify is part of the hierarchy tree in Insight. If you were to change a parent of a calculation, that calculation value would change as well. To illustrate this, right-click the fluid part and select clips in the x direction, add velocity to it, and compute the spa mean of velocity. Finally, press evaluate for selected parts. The spa mean quantity now has a certain value to it. If you were to change the parent of that clip, its value would change accordingly. This is an important and fundamental point involving the calculator quantity in true analyses is that it is all tied together. And as you change the parent or any of the other parents, the calculator quantity will get recomputed and a new value will be updated as well. You can do things such as adding new field variables. 
For example, spamming produces a constant whereas le size would produce an elemental variable which is equivalent to the element's length, area, and volume. This would create a new scalar field. You can select all parts and press on the Evaluate for Selected Parts button. LE size now comes up in the scalar field because it is a scalar field quantity. It is important to note that all functions will update if you change time steps, similarly to how they do when changing the parent. There are also a few functions which are over time. For example, temporal mean will compute the mean over time, which is the mean value at each location, node or element, of a scalar or vector variable over the interval from time step 1 to time step 2. Another useful function for transient datasets would be temporal min-max, which computes a scalar or variable whose value is the minimum or maximum at each location, node or element, of a scalar or vector variable over the interval from time step 1 to time step 2. Both of these functions require that your domain is fixed over time, so there's no change in the element definition, so that the min or max can be computed. As you can see, the calculator functions are straightforward. It is important to always know which parents are selected for your calculation, understand the differences between predefined and user-defined functions, and selecting the appropriate functions for your operations such as area, boundary layers, complex variables, densities, metrics, sizes, forces, integrals, momentum, and the list goes on. For any inquiries on calculator functions, do not hesitate in utilizing the help buttons within your calculator toolbox window. A plethora of information will be accessible to you with information on the specific function selected. This concludes our demonstration on how to use Insight's predefined calculator functions to create additional variables based on existing data.